G'day bike riders and basketballers. Welcome to another video about the state of bicycle infrastructure in Geelong. Click on the subscribe button to keep up to date with the latest videos. Today we are riding to the home of the Geelong United Basketball Association. It is situated in Belmont on Crows Road. Basketball in Geelong has gone crazy and there are so many kids playing. Numbers have increased significantly since COVID to the point where there just aren't enough courts in Geelong for all the junior matches. The AWA Stadium is home of Geelong United and there are six courts, which are usually full of junior basketball from about 4.30pm until 8pm, probably about four nights a week. This should be a prime opportunity for kids and parents to ride their bikes as this is situated just off Barwon Heads Road with a new shared path that has just been constructed. The new shared path has reasonable connections to the Barwon River Trail, which opens up active transport possibilities for a big chunk of Geelong, including Belmont, Highton, South Geelong, Newtown and any of the other suburbs along the Barwon River. ADW Stadium has a small bike rack out the front of the stadium. My son and I ride to the games most weeks, and usually there are no other bikes in the rack. Sometimes there is another bike from one of the boys in my son's team, but usually we're the only ones arriving by bike. Why is this, considering we're so close to the Barwon River Trails and the brand new Barwon Heads Road shared path? Let's have a look at the map. I had to draw the routes in, as Google couldn't find the shared path routes. I'm not sure how Google Bike Routes gets updated, but there is no chance of you finding your way along here on these trails unless you know your way. We're going to look at the two routes. Firstly, we're going to start at the intersection of Settlement Road and Barwon Heads Road to the underpass under Barwon Heads Road. Then we will look at the route from the river to the underpass and finally from the underpass to the AWA Stadium. Let's start in Belmont at the intersection of Settlement Road and Barwon Heads Road next to the Criterium Track. First we have to negotiate the slip lane for cars going onto the main highway. Bike riders do have priority here, it's painted yellow and there is give way sign for drivers as they move onto the speed hump. This is a great traffic calming feature and it does feel like the space belongs to walkers and riders. Even with this though, drivers don't always give way, so you still have to be careful. Next is the crossing across Settlement Road, also the Princess Highway. It's a long wait here and there are 8 lanes of traffic to get across, it's a long way over. Onto the shared path, we then have to cross over to the road that goes to the golf course. It doesn't seem to have a name. Drivers must give way to walkers and riders when turning into a street, so those turning left from Barwon Heads Road must give way, as per the Vic Roads rules. Drivers coming out of the golf course have priority as they are not turning. Disappointingly, a crossing like we saw over the slip lane earlier, giving bike riders priority, wasn't installed here, which would have been a big improvement. This piece of separated path is pretty good. But then we get to the intersection of Breakwater Road. There is a slip lane, six lanes of traffic and another slip lane. The first lane has a raised crossing and then it is a long wait at the lights. It is not a pleasant place to be with all the traffic noise and all the traffic zooming past. Once over the six lanes, you then have to cross another slip lane, but the light sequence doesn't match up. You get stuck here and the drivers also have a red light. I'm not sure why this doesn't go green for bike riders after pressing the button on the other side. But what happens is that after getting the green for the big crossing, bike riders will just go across as the cars are stopped anyway, which kind of defeats the purpose of the lights. I've never really understood why on roads like this it takes so long for the lights to change for walkers and bikers. Usually what happens is that someone will press the button and then after the lights don't change, they will cross the road when it's clear. After they are across, the lights change and then the drivers have to stop and the walker or biker has already crossed. Seems it would make more sense to immediately change for walkers and bikers on some of these crossings. After crossing Breakwater Road, again there are no wayfinding signs. First time I came along here, I went right and ended up at the bus stop on the busy road. You need to head left here, and then right onto the road that goes around the sports grounds. Again, there isn't a sign. We'll leave this one here where we turn into the new section of path, and we'll look at coming from the other direction along the river to this point. Okay, after leaving the river track, you need to ride around the road around the sports fields, past the shared zone sign indicating 10 kilometers per hour, which no driver seems to stick to. Once again, follow your nose, unless you already know your way along here, you wouldn't have a chance of knowing where to go. As mentioned earlier, Google can't direct you. Google has no idea where the bike paths are. Imagine the chaos on the roads if they were signed and mapped like bike paths. No one would ever know where to go. Okay, so here is the entrance to the new path that we saw earlier when we came in from the right. The new path is of great quality, but judging by the flood sign, it is expected that it might flood in heavy rain as we go under the bridge. 
This new path was put in when Barwon Heads Roads was duplicated a couple of years ago, and you can follow the new shared path a few kilometres out to the new suburbs. We reach a junction with no wayfinding signs whatsoever, but at least I know to go right to get to the AWA Basketball Stadium. The path leads to the traffic lights, but we'll follow the desire line to Crows Road, which is the final leg of our trip. Crows Road is marked on the active transport map as having an on-road bike path, so it should be just a short, simple final part of the journey. We enter Crows Road by the dropping off the kerb. Looks like a newly surfaced piece of road. But I don't see any bike lane or on-road bike path along here. There is not even a footpath. So where is the bike path the active transport maps talk about? There is a faded white line, but that is full of parked cars. So that is just car parks. There is no bike sign, no shadows, and no bike lane. Who are the makers of this map kidding? Are these maps designed just to shock bike riders into never riding again? Kids 12 or under are permitted to ride in the footpath, and adults accompanying children 12 or under can also. This is all great for our younger basketballers, but where is the footpath? So we have to ride down the road past all the parked cars, and this is a light industrial area, and there are often trucks along here. We turn left and head into the car park. At least we can ride right at the front door to a well-positioned bike rack. While everyone else is fighting for a car park, we can park right at the door. We made another video about the active transport maps and just how poorly thought out they are, recommending people to use the maps to plan routes to ride to shops, sport and school. But they direct you onto busy freeways and in many cases, they tell you there is bike infrastructure when there is none. These maps were never ground truthed. It would have taken someone about two days to ride all the bike lanes on this map and check them. But instead, we have this document that is completely misleading that no one in any position of authority can even acknowledge. I've brought this up many times with the City of Greater Geelong. Anyway, if this last connection along Crows Road was improved, it might advertise to basketballs and parents that riding to games is a viable option. At the junior game times between 4.30 and 6.30, it is mayhem trying to get to the games by car. So for many parts of Geelong, the ride time is comparable or shorter than driving. The route is also pretty good for most of the way, but extremely poor for the last link to the basketball stadium. Disconnected networks are one of the biggest barriers to the uptake of active transportation, and a bike network is only as good as its worst section. Before I leave, don't forget to click on the subscribe button to get notified about more bicycle infrastructure videos. Thanks for watching, and good luck with your next basketball game. I'm the Bike Route Buddy, and I'd love to see you riding to the basketball sometime.